Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Warfare. The Holy Spirit and secularism. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader Olumba, Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7. Verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second lesson, James chapter 3 verse 7. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Golden text. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 11 to 12 For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Introductory Spiritual Chorus If you rejoice in the Spirit, you will have life eternal, for flesh leads to death. Quote The Spirit of Great Light Beloved, that is what will constitute the revelation of today. Those who worship God in spirit and in truth also extend it to the Father and such do not wallow in any form of sinfulness. Bear in mind that you cease to be in spirit any time you are jealous, envious, or engaged in any deceitful act. Therefore, you have to be very mindful of those who still indulge in unrighteousness, for they are not in spirit. We ought to be thankful to the Father for having bestowed upon us the Holy Spirit, for it is the Holy Spirit which guides and leads. Finally, He is by our side and does not allow us to fall off the path of rectitude. Through the Holy Spirit, the worldly people can be distinguished from the children of God. Whoever tells you that he abides in the Spirit, but tells lies and indulges, and indulges in other vices, is a deceitful person. But if you see someone who claims these qualities and is truly humble, meek, and no falsehood is found in him. Such a person is in spirit. The spirit of God embodies all the heavenly virtues. They comprise love, peace, meekness, truth. Anything contrary to these has no bearing with the Holy Spirit. Those who worship God in spirit and in truth are his children. That is why we should be zealous and glad to worship God in these divine manners. So as to remain as his children. Beloved, as God's children, we can discern between good and evil. We do not seek mundane things. Because of the divine benefits, I keep imploring you to abide in spirit. For anyone who abides in spirit hardly stumbles or falls. Let our first lesson be re-examined. First lesson, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Beloved, you have heard what the, scripture, the scriptural nominations has emphasized. It reveals that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You have heard of the various spirits God has endowed with us. They have nothing to do with mundane possession. You are admonished to compare these spirits so that you would be able to differentiate between the spirit of God and the spirit of the world. A godly spirit does not engage in fighting, in quarreling and other vices, but it exhibits the heavenly virtues from the very foundation of the world. And that is why we have been identified as the luckiest generation. There is a maxim that a tree is known by its fruit. Therefore, it is pertinent that we exhibit these virtues. For doing so, we shall be known as children of God and the Spirit of God who dwell with us. But when you go contrary to these virtues by indulging in quarreling, in fighting and other vices, the Spirit of God will desert you. The Spirit of God dwells where heavenly virtues abide. That is why you are advised to walk in the Spirit, for you can be misled or caused to err if you do not. Anybody who walks in the Spirit of God is truthful humble and obedient. Let our second lesson be re-examined. Second lesson, James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Beloved, you have heard the scriptures that make up the second lesson. It is for this reason that our Lord Jesus Christ said, whoever is not born of the water and of the Holy Spirit cannot practice the word of God. Spiritual quarrels. Anyone led by the Spirit of God the same is a real child of God. Those who are really the children of God and are led by God, they humble themselves and are truthful at all times and exhibit all the heavenly virtues. According to verse 10 of the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Behold, what is done on earth is equally done in heaven. Therefore, when you work according to the dictates of the Spirit, same is recorded for you in heaven. When you walk in Spirit, you have to acquaint yourself with the qualities associated with it. In Spirit, there is long suffering, there is patience, meekness, humility, and perseverance. It is absolutely necessary to abide in spirit every time. Let your thoughts and deeds be of the spirit and abide according to the directives of the Holy Spirit. If you were in the spirit, you would not offend your brethren. But if mistakenly you offend your brethren, you should immediately seek peace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. This is so because those who walk in spirit are directed by God and walk in a manner that pleases God at all times. The worldly spirit that has subdued man is responsible for the problems found today in the world. 
but God's Spirit has manifested to restore peace in the entire world. We should always pray for the Holy Spirit so that we would be endowed with such good virtues like love, peace, truth, humility, and mercy. God does not associate with sins, neither does He encourage it. The secular spirit is the source of the trouble in the entire earth. If you are directed by the secular spirit, you shall be overtaken by predicaments. On the other hand, you would not encounter problem if the spirit of God controls you. Your ways would be made straight. It is the Spirit of God that prevails here in this kingdom. That is why we are able to differentiate between the good and the bad, and also try to put into practice these virtues. The only wisdom of the Spirit of man is what is within man. But the Spirit of God knows what is of God and has nothing in common with carnality. God knows the reason. He has given us His Spirit. It is meant to uplift His work in the whole world. The Divine Concept of Love A, a righteous man works here on earth and a deceitful man cast his burden also here on earth. But by the fruits of their labor, you are able to identify them. You can distinguish that of God from the one of the world. Those of God do things according to God's directive. But as for those of the world that contradicts God's ways, they act according to the injunctions of the world. Beloved, love is the paramount virtue. It is because of the uniqueness of the love in the kingdom that is preached every minute of the day. Love comes from God. All year round, no other thing apart from love is preached so that we would get acquainted with this concept. Practice it and be saved through it. Do not take instructions from your husband or your wife or guardian or parents or kindred. It is only the Holy Spirit that you have to listen to and act according to his directive. The Holy Spirit teaches us to forgive one another, humble ourselves, respect all, endure in distress and evangelize the far and the near so that the entire world would be familiar with the gospels and be changed to God. Beloved, we have reason to be thankful to God for endowing us with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit which He gave His Son is the very Holy Spirit that He has placed us in the right part of God. It has endowed us with the truth, with peace, with humility and love. Let our golden text be read again. Golden text. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 11 to 12. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Antagonism between good and evil. Beloved, there is a great difference between Brotherhood of the Cross and Star and the Orthodox Churches. 
The reason is that immediately you are baptized into brotherhood of the cross and star, you are instantly filled with the Spirit of God and your sinful nature is destroyed. From that moment you are endowed with the Spirit of love, of kindness, of humility, of meekness and mercy, while the Spirit of deceit the spirit of anger, licentiousness, and greed are taken away. God is not harsh with us. Rather, he teaches us how to be worthy of his presence. If you make a reference to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1, it is stated thus, to everything there is a reason and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Therefore, this is the time for you to worship the Lord in spirit and behold his glory. When you have the spirit of God, you would always love one another, be truthful and not seek for mundane things. The evil spirit cannot exhibit anything good everything that comes from it is evil and what is of the holy spirit is full of righteousness and blessedness a man directed by the holy spirit admits his faults no matter the situation of things and place of occurrence i do not intend to be tedious with you those who have ears, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.